Some people say the Camino starts when you take your first step out your front door. Some people say the Camino starts when it's conceived in your heart. And for me, that's the case. Trust yourself and finding this force in, deep in yourself. I was crying when I was watching the videos and photos. And, and I think if someone is crying while watching them, the, the Camino is, is uh, calling them. You know, we're all together. I don't care if you're Catholic, Christian, Jewish, Muslim. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask, is the Camino de Santiago still a spiritual journey? My name is Albert Gonzalez. I started on June 19th, 16th, something like that. And uh, I'm 58, I'll be 59 in like a week. I was born in Cuba, but uh, I came with my two sons on a religious retreat through the Camino Norte. It was life-changing, fulfilling, a dream come true for me. My name is Krista Ramirez. I'm from outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm 43 years old, and I just finished the Camino Frontier. I am Cristina, I am from Romania, and I am 44 years old, and I had my 44th birthday on the Camino. That was my birthday surprise. I had it in Logroño. It was a very special birthday, and I did the French Camino. I'm Jean, I come from Belgium. I've just finished yesterday the Camino Frances. It was interesting. I, I made this Camino up for thinking about myself, my life. From Philadelphia to, to Spain for Camino. Oh, it's a really long story, but it started with a blog that I read in 2008 of a woman also from America who has blindness. Her name is Lucy. And I found her blog and I read it and I, it was one of those things in Spanish, corazonada. I just knew I had to do the Camino. So since 2008, it's been my biggest dream to come do the Camino. And so I finally got the chance to do it. When I was little, I, uh, I went to an all boys Catholic school and one of, the, one of the brothers there, we were going over the Canterbury Tales and one of the brothers had mentioned that he'd done the Camino and uh, how it changed him. And I thought, you know, I want to be a good Catholic, but I don't think I'm ever going to do the Camino. <laughs> and here I am. So, uh, but it always stayed in the back of my mind. And then um, as my sons were getting older, I wanted them to have time to reflect on their own lives. And I think it was a good decision to do the Camino Norte because you're all by yourself. Unlike uh, some of the other Caminos on the Camino Norte, yeah, there's very few pilgrims and you, you go through the forest and you spend a lot of time um, thinking about your life and reflecting on what you want to do. Uh, last year, when I was celebrating my 43rd Camino, my husband asked me, what is your birthday wish? And I said, my birthday wish is to have my next birthday somewhere on the Camino. And God has given it to me. Um. I was in Logroño on that day in June, and uh, it was very beautiful. I participated in the Pilgrim's Mass in the church. I was surrounded with good friends, which I have made on the Camino, so it was very special. I understand that Camino for you is a spiritual journey. Uh, also, also? Yes, a spiritual journey too, and walking in nature with some religious, religious aspects as well, with all that I'm not Catholic but uh, I would recommend this pilgrimage to all people, all religions, or even for people who are not religious. I think it is impossible not to, as a Catholic or a Christian, it's, you see it all the time, right? You see everything, the churches and everything, but I think it's very universal because you have all this time to think about everything, everything you've done, everything you've done right, everything you've done wrong, uh, what you're going to do with your life from uh, henceforth. So I think it's impossible for it not to be spiritual, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I could say I found out about Camino when I was in a very kind of low place in my life. Some people will say the Camino starts when you get home. Some people say the Camino starts when you take your first step out your front door. Some people say the Camino starts when it's conceived in your heart. And for me, that's the case. So. Um, I've had a lot of 
a spiritual journey up until even before starting Camino de Santiago, including uh, converting to Catholicism in 20 2011. So for me, I know people say faith and spirituality are different, but I think they're actually very holistic. So for me, this has just been wonderful to stop in all of the churches, um, be able to pray along the way. And I think some of that preparation work even before I came here, I just wanted to be as open as possible to everyone I met. The concept of communion, that sharing of souls, is really true for me on this Camino. So I hope that I've been able to offer that to other people too. Uh, I'm not Christian. I'm not Catholic. I'm pure atheist. But uh, be atheist, don't, doesn't mean to be closed at a spiritual life. You know, uh, I didn't go in the Alberg. I made only three Albergs on the 28 days of my travel. I sleep in woods um, with a sleeping bag, with a mattress and, and so on. One night at fall, five, it seemed it's, it smelled rain. And I say, okay. put a sleeping bag and all my fucking stuff in my backpack and go on and I I find a little village with a with a shelter just before the rain. And it's a damn rain man. Oh you, you can imagine oh, no I'm sure you can imagine. And I made a coffee, eat some dry fruit and a, a sausage smoking a cigarette, drinking another coffee. I feel just in peace. That's maybe one of my greatest souvenirs of Camino, is the, the, this feeling of peace at this precise moment. And after, after this day, the rest of the Camino was, yes, was in peace. The Camino for me was a, a way of being alone with God and with myself at the same time and with other people, of course. Because Camino it is, is about people as well, now I think. Not only walking alone in the nature, especially if you are uh, walking the Camino Frances, you will meet a lot of people, especially when you most, mostly need them. Or from the community of pilgrims? Uh, yes, in the first two weeks I had some problems with my feet. Uh, I had an inflammation in my heels, in fact. I had to go to the hospital in Burgos. Sometimes I was on the point of giving it up, but every day I had helping and supporting people around me and God, of course, and, and I, I could go on. Uh, I could go farther every day. And uh, after... Uh, the 20th day, I had to say goodbye to almost all my friends, Camino friends. Uh, some of them stopped in Burgos, the others stopped in Leon or in Astorga because they didn't have more time now. I had a very good friend who had to stop earlier because he had a very serious blister. For two days I was crying because of this. Uh, and in the last two, de uh, last two weeks, uh, I was walking mostly alone. And uh, now I think that by the time I had to say goodbye to all my Camino friends, I became strong enough to be able to walk alone and enjoy it. Uh, God took care of me in such a special way. So send me friends when I needed them every day and every time and let me alone when I, I was able to walk alone and strong enough. Um, but actually, I felt um, a real presence of my grandparents on the Camino, which sounds really strange, but actually I had an advice from a friend who has done the Camino before and he said, talk to the local people, talk to you know, the people that are you know, in the towns, which I can do, fortunately. Um, and I talked to a lot of older people on the Camino as I walked and really felt like connected to my grandparents who are no longer alive, which was amazing and really unexpected. I didn't think I would be thinking about that on the Camino. And then another time was uh, I was going to Trabadelo to Casa Susi, which is a really cool albergue. And 
there's chestnut trees and mint in nature walking there. And my grandparents had that in their house in Philadelphia area. And so I don't know, it was just, it was an interesting and really unexpected spiritual connection, I feel like, to my grandparents on the Camino. Totally unexpected. Spiritual practice during the Camino. Sure. Every day um, we would uh, get together in the morning and uh, with my two sons, we would find a church like this and uh, we just do very simple prayers. Um, uh, you know, just our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be. And then uh, also pray that uh, we make it through. My son has type 1 diabetes and so we were really concerned with his insulin issues and so we carried all this extra we had double medical supplies and my son my other son was carrying some of it and so we were we but that's a big issue and then my other son uh has Asperger's so um you know that was part of our, our prayer every day but that, that was a big part of uh how we prepared and what we had to do we we had a few issues you know my son's insulin uh the pump didn't work the first day we had problems because it didn't change time zones so we couldn't figure out why his insulin was off so much and it took us a few days to figure it out yeah no i think the prayers helped you kind of uh stay focused and get through the difficulty of the day in your life and especially my life of soldier uh when you have a something really physical, you need motivation. Uh, in the army, when you have a strong physical moment, you always have a group effect. Your comrades, your friends, your brothers in arms, you have always this group effect. Here, there is no group effect. You are alone. As these difficult moments, you need to go inside yourself, deep inside yourself, really deep, to find force. The force, uh, yeah, like in Star Wars, uh, the force to make one step more and one step more and one step more. And you find that force deep in yourself, in yourself. And that's one of the lessons. There is no real motivation for uh, an atheist, uh, no sins, no, no God, no something like that to get, I go, go to, to Santiago. No, it's just yourself. And finding this force in, deep in yourself is maybe the, the moment. In fact, I, I knew this even before starting it. I, I was so, uh, I don't know how to explain, I was so mad about it in the past two years that the, the Camino was calling me, I think. I was crying when I was watching the videos and photos and there were hard moments. Uh, whenever I had the occasion, I went to the Pilgrim's Mass. I got the blessing. It meant a lot to me. And uh, especially in Albergues where there were volunteers working, they were so nice and helping, helpful and uh, giving us a, a glass of water. And even, even in, in these uh, 10 days when, when I, I had horrible pains, uh, whenever I, I slept at a good albergue with uh, volunteers, I became stronger. And on the following day, I, I felt strong again and, and, and could walk on. You know, the, the way I can describe it the most is the oneness that we all are. You know, we're all together. I don't care if you're Catholic, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, German, Gallego, whatever, Cuba. You realize that we are all one. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat that is designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice, and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable.